So, Greg, the country of Mexico has a significant allocation on the river and have in recent years banked water to help support Lake Mead's elevation. What role does the country play in these negotiations? Uh, Mexico plays a very uh, large and important role, um, starting with the, the kind of hierarchical uh, law of the river, Mexico has a treaty right, so it's a right between the Republic of Mexico and the United States, whereby the United States guaranteed Mexico 1.5 million acre feet uh, per year, subject to emergency declarations of sorts. Uh, so that's roughly 10% of what John just talked about in terms of river usage overall. Uh, and the, the thing with uh, Mexico is that while it has the best priority on the river, that's the highest priority you can get, uh, even more than California. They might not agree with that, but even more than California. Um, it has come to the table as a, as a full partner in, uh, in many ways. So, st so starting in 2010, uh, in minute 318, Mexico had some earthquakes that affected some deliveries in uh, agricultural districts. And they started storing water in, in Lake Mead under, under that minute, which is a, essentially an interpretive document of the treaty that I talked about. Uh, but beyond that, um, in minute 319, which was agreed to in 2012, uh, Mexico agreed to take cuts uh, as the river declined and Lake Mead's elevation declined. It didn't have to do that, right? Mexico had the, the best priority on the river and it could have sat back and said, we're not gonna participate. But recognizing the difficulties that the system faced, as early as 2012, it, it essentially became a full partner in sharing the pain that John talked about. Uh, in 2017, we executed minute 323, which is another interpretive document, uh, continued the shortage provisions of Mexico's uh, uh, allocation. But more important than that, it, Mexico agreed ahead of time that to the extent the United States enters into a drought contingency plan, or the lower basin does, uh, whereby the lower basin takes further cuts or is required to add water to the lake, Mexico would do so too. So it took the first step, even though it was really only required to take the last. So they, they've been a full partner that way. There's a lot of work to be done in Mexico relative to the politics. It's uh, complicated politically. The rights that Mexico has to water in the Colorado River are federal rights, uh, yet it, it needs to get down to the irrigation districts to conserve. So we gotta go through a couple different pieces of the federal government in Mexico to make that happen. Uh, we're, we're doing that constantly. We're trying to do projects in Mexico that conserve water, that keeps water in Mead. We're part of that. We have partners in the lower basin that are part of that, and the federal government is part of that as well. Uh, but that dialogue continues along with the dialogue that John and Colby referred to with the states. Uh, because Mexico is going to need to play a, a major role in coming to terms with the pain that needs to be shared. And the only thing I would add about in terms of our relationship uh, with, with Mexico is they, they really have been a tremendous partner. Uh, they've been more forward-looking uh, and, frankly, more aggressive in advocating for steps that need to be taken uh, for a sustainable river for, for everybody than many of the water users uh, within the United States. And, and a lot of the agreements that Greg talked about, and he and I were both involved in negotiating a lot of those, they're, they're some of the best new uh, steps to protect this river that we've taken uh, over the last couple of decades. You know, I have a copy of Minute 319 in my office that's been translated into Russian because these transboundary uh, negotiations and mutual protections for, for two countries are being used as models in other parts of the world for how transboundary water issues can be resolved.